Today for our lecture, we're going to be talking about selective breeding in animals and plants. So there's two pictures there, a great white shark and a cat. So if we were to cross these two species, what do you think you'd get? Now, I know some of you have already come up with some crazy answers. Well, this is what I got. A cat shark. Well, actually, no, not really. The genetic information for these two species is very different, and there's no way that they would be able to produce any kind of offspring. Here's what a real cat shark looks like. This is a Galapagos cat shark that was first discovered only three years ago in 2012, and there are over 150 species of cat shark. So two species that are completely different that we know can reproduce because they're, they are genetically similar enough are the horse and the donkey. And the horse and the donkey produce a mule. The mule is sterile. It cannot reproduce. So that's the end of the line. Another uh, example, two species that are different but can reproduce are the lion and tiger, and they make these guys, ligers. All right, so we're going to be talking about features within a species that we would choose to pass on to the offspring. So that is called a desirable feature. And the picture here is super cow. And the, the, the feature that is useful is large muscles. So big muscle mass. Uh, and well, we're carnivores, we eat meat, so we are choosing and breeding for large muscle mass and we are passing that on through selective breeding. All right, so selective breeding is choosing parents with desirable features to produce new varieties of animals or plants that have these desirable features. And so the male bull cow is having intercourse with the female, and he will pass his genes for large muscle mass to the female, and she also has a gene for large muscle mass, and they will produce cows large muscle mass. Another desirable feature is milk yield, the amount of milk a cow produces. We drink uh, milk from cows, dairy products, um, and so this is a desirable feature that humans want. So we breed for this. Okay. Uh, humans have been conducting uh, selective breeding for hundreds of years. Uh, here's an example with pigs. The picture on the right is a wild pig, which is native to Asia and Europe. And the picture on the left, uh, sorry, the picture on the right is a Yorkshire pig, also called an English large white pig. Now, over hundreds of years, it's been about 200 years or more that we have been breeding um, pigs and uh, this this species actually uh, was first recognized in the 1860s. Now today, this is the pig of choice that we um, purchase when we're at the markets. Okay, high muscle uh, muscle mass. Okay, dogs. Okay, there are over 180 different breeds of dogs, and all of these dogs were originally bred from the gray wolf. So different desirable features were selected and bred for in, in different continents throughout the world. We came up, uh, oh, uh, we came up and, and now there are over 180 different breeds of dogs. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at some plants. Okay, the same thousands of years of selective breeding and you can see these pictures, uh, watermelon, carrot, corn, banana, and uh, yellow mustard, uh, and eggplant. So either uh, different features were selected for, like uh, fruit size, or uh, leaves, or stems, or roots. And they were uh, bred through many, many generations. Here's a picture of corn. 
and on the left you can see what the ancestor of corn looked like. And if you follow this across, you'll see that in the female version of the native corn, you'll eventually get to what modern corn looks like, the big cob with many, many kernels. And I've used this example before, but this is the uh, wild mustard plant with the yellow flowers. And there's actually six different edible plants that have uh, been bred from this one plant. And you can see them right there. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage and cauliflower, kale and kohlrabi. And it shows you the modified trait or the, the desirable feature, modified trait, desirable feature that was bred for. Okay. We're going to talk about what most plants do um, through pollination. Uh, most plants go through, are, are, most plants are self-pollinated. And this is when the nucleus of the egg cell and the nucleus of the male part of the, uh, of the flower, the pollen grain, uh, come together on the same flower. Okay. And so that is what, what has happened to it is that the, the, the plant has pollinated itself. And the pictures on the right are of rice. So this is what happens with rice. Well, over time, uh, we have uh, investigated and experimented and used a method called cross-pollination to select desirable features in plants that we want to see in the offspring. So there is a diagram on the left which shows uh, how this is done. Um, first on the flower the stamens are cut. The stamens have the pollen on them. They're removed and they're passed to the carpal which is the, the main female part of the flower. Uh, but it's a it's a different flower, a different plant altogether. So after the pollination has happened, the fertilization occurs, producing seeds, and then those seeds are planted in the next generation. And those plants grow up, and whatever feature is dominant, in this case it would be flower petal color, being purple or white, whichever was dominant, purple or white, would show up with more frequency. Frequency being uh, if there were 10, maybe uh, 8 out of 10 would have purple flowers. Okay. And so in the following generation, if you still wanted purple flowers, you could probably get it so all of those offspring have purple flowers. You spread out what's called the recessive gene, and we'll be talking more about that, or the recessive allele. All right, so how do we do this in, in uh, animals? Um, artificial insemination. So semen is put into the female's vagina through a long tube to make her pregnant without sexual intercourse. Okay, and art artificial insemination is done um, in... Uh, in pigs and in cows and in horses a lot of times because it there's less of a chance of harming the female or the male if they were instead of if they were to actually have intercourse and the male was to mount the female there's just less risk involved and also the semen from a male let's say it's a cow like in this case um, can be harvested can be captured uh, and uh, freeze dried, and then it can be sold to different farms throughout the world. So this is one technique that's used, and it's used in many, many industries because it's safe, and the semen can be transferred all over the world. 
All right, one of the last things I want to talk to you about is what happens to species when they're dying out and um, there are no more species, there are no more uh, of the species that can uh, actually reproduce. So it's called extinct. And um, here are two examples of species that have gone extinct. The one on the left is the Tasmanian tiger. And the Tasmanian tiger died out in, it, it went extinct in 1936. It was on the island of Tasmania. And it was hunted into extinction because it was um, going on ranchers' farms and eating sheep and chickens. So it was hunted into extinction. And it's gone forever. The picture on the right is a uh, Baiji River dolphin, which is extinct. It went extinct in 2006. It used to have a habitat in the Yangtze River in China. And um, again, problems with humans and uh, humans polluting the river, and uh, the dolphin was getting caught in nets and um, also running into propellers because they're very, very blind. Um, I can't see. You can barely see. But anyway, um, it's very sad. And now, today, uh, in this day and age, most of the extinctions that occur throughout the world are due to humans. So just to give you some facts that I learned from um, the World Wildlife Foundation, there are over 100 million spe different species on Earth. And um, it's estimated that at least 10,000 species are going extinct every year. And so that's just something to think about uh, at the end of this lecture. All right, so I'll see you in class. Make sure you get your notes copied. Anything in blue, write it down. Bye-bye, guys.